Hello everyone, welcome to Robotnet. Today in this video, I am going to tell you how to access GPI peripheral as an input using STM32 nuclear board. So let's start. First, I will open STM32 cube ID, then I'll go to file and then I'll click on new and then I'll go to STM32 project. Now let's select the board from here, board selector. Okay, so let's write the board name. Let's select the board. So let's find Nucleo F double four six R E. This is the board, and here I have to select again. Let's select the board here also, and then let's do next. Now let's give a name. Button. Control LED. And because we are going to use bare metal programming language, so I will select empty and then I'll do finish. So our project is created. Now let's go to source and let's click on main.c file let me close other file okay so this is the project button control led so basically in this video i'm going to use a button to give an input to gpio peripherals and i'll be using one led whenever whenever we press the button led will be turned on so now Let's write the program. So here you have to write the program inside this main function. So I'm going to use one external button and one external LED. I'll be using external LED and external button. So button I'm going to connect on PC0 and LED I'm going to connect on PC1. Do the connection as it showed in the video. And So first let's go to datasheet and we have to check on which bus port C is hanging. So for that in datasheet I have to go on page number 16. So I'll go on page number 16 and we have to check on which bus GPIO C is hanging. So here you can see GPIO port C is hanging on AHP1 bus. Now let's open the reference manual and we have to open the memory and bus architecture now. And let's note down all the GPIO addresses from the memory organization. So in the memory organization, you can see what is the address of GPIO C port. So let's note down all the addresses of GPIO C. So this is the address of GPIO C. Let's note down the address of GPIO C in our program. So this is the address of GPIOC. 
let's copy from here let's paste this address in our code gpioc address for enabling the gpio peripherals we need to send enable clock using rcc unit so let's note down this address this is the rcc address so let's copy from here again let's paste in our code So this is the RCC address, RCC base address. Now let's start writing our program. First thing is we need to create a pointer variable to store GPIO address and RCC address. So first let's create RCC base address. Well to so as I told GPIOC is hanging on AHB1 bus, so we need to go in reference manual and we need to go in RCC unit and we have to find AHB1 ENR clock enable register. So this is the RCC unit inside RCC let's go to RCC registers and we have to find ahb one ANR peripheral clock enable register. So this is RCC ahb one peripheral clock enable register let's go in this. So we have to enable GPIO C in order to access the port C. This is the offset address of this one so we need to copy this offset address and this offset address I'll be adding with the base address of RCC unit so with the base address of RCC let's add this 0x30 because we are going to enable AHP1 ANR peripheral bus so after that here we need to give an integer 32 this is the data type Again, we have to do typecasting as we are going to store address of the peripherals. So this is how you have to do typecasting. And now let's write the address of RCC peripheral 0x4002-3830. That's it. Now let's copy this line and then let's paste it. Now, now we have to store GPIOC address. The GPIOC address is 0x4002-0000. That's it. Now let's paste again. Now you have to go in GPIO registers. So let's open the reference manual again. And let's go to GPIO registers. So here GPIO registers. The GPIO first register is mode. This register is very important. So using this register, we can set a pin mode. So in this activity, we are going to use PC0 as an input and PC1 as an output. So input we can do by 00, zero and output we can assign by writing 01. So we are going to use motor 0 and motor 1. Motor 0 as an input and motor 1 as an output. For that, let's use this offset. So instead of GPIO C base address, we can write GPIO C motor. And the motor offset is 00, zero so there will be no change in the base address. This GPIOC motor register value is 
zero is double zero. Yes. So we have noted GPIO C model register value. Now what others are registers are required? Now we have to go again in reference manual and we have to find output data register because PC1 is going to be output and PC0 is going to be input. So let's go in output data register. Let's find output data register. This is input data register. Let's note down the offset of input data register. So this offset of input data register we have to store output of offset of input data register we have to add with GPIO C base address. So let's copy again this line and let's paste. And this is going to be IDR input data register and the base address of IDR would be 0 x 4002810810 now let's note down ODR register value so again let's see the offset value of ODR register this is input data register now output data register offset is 0x14 so again we'll add 14 at the end of this thing so we have noted IDR, ODR and border register base address this is extra so we have noted all the registers whatever is required for this activity now we have to send enable clock to GPIO C peripherals. So for that, let's use this things. Let's copy this address. Let's copy this thing and let's paste here. And we have to enable GPIO C. So I'll go to reference manual. I'll open ARP 1 ANR peripheral clock enable register. So here it is. And we have to send one to GPIO C. So we have to set this two bit. For that, let's go here and let's write four. So GPIO C peripheral is activated now. Now we have to set the mode. PC0 as an input and PC1 as an output. For that, let's go to reference manual and let's go to motor register. So, motor register, we have to set motor 0 as the input and motor 1 as an output. So, first let's clear this bit because for input, we have to clear the bit. So, let's copy the motor register and we have to clear the bit for clearing we have to use AND operation along with the negation sign and let's send 1 to the 0 let's send 3 to the 0 bit 3 means I am sending 1 1 to the 0 bit and 1 bit and it will do the negation of that so both pin is going to be 0 0 so 0 pin and 1 pin is going to be 0 0 now input mode is set clearing the bit for setting PC0 as an input now let's set output mode so for output mode as I told LED is connected on PC1 so we have to deal with motor 1 and for output mode 0 and 1 so we have to set second bit and we have to clear the third bit so for that again let's copy the motor register and first let's clear the bit so that if an initial data will be there it will be clear 
so let's clear the second and third bit and now let's set the second bit again for setting we will use our operation and then so second bit is set so we have set the mode as an output PC one. Now we have to read the value of IDR. So for that, let's create one loop while one. So this is the loop, and this will be writing the code. Before that, we need to create one variable. And in that variable will be reading the value. So let's write a value. And then PC0. So IDR, let me open the IDR registered in reference manual. This is input data registered. So we have to we have to read IDR0. We have to read IDR0 for that. Let's copy this address. Let's copy this pointer variable and let's paste it here. And let's do and with 0 x 0 1. 0x1 that's it now if value is greater than 0 then we have to turn on PC1 so let's copy this ODR and then let's paste it here so this bit we have to set we have to send one to the first bit else we have to clear this bit we are going to turn off the led in this line Let me connect the cable of STM32 port. Now let's clean the project and after that let's build the project. So there is no error in the program. Now let's debug the code. Now let's click on OK. Let's cut this line because we have to read the value of button. So this should be within while loop. So this should be within infinite loop. Now let's run the program. Now when I'm pressing the button, LED is turning on. If you want to learn bare metal programming language, visit www.robopreneur.com. Thank you.